Eighty percent of all government spending on health and education in India is done by state governments. Only ten percent by the centre. Yet the central government has the largest bureaucracies for health, education, and rural development, all of which are state subjects. Over sixty-five percent of capital outlay by governments is undertaken by states. Only one third by the centre. Yet it is the centre which runs huge revenue deficits, leading to debt saving. Successful state programs are routinely appropriated by the center. States are forced to implement them with their money and their staff, and the entire credit is taken by the central governments. These are some of the nuggets from India's fiscal federalism, a new book authored by former RBI governor Y.V. Reddy, along with G.R. Reddy, an economist and member of the Indian Economic Service. Dr. Reddy, thank you very much for joining us about this newest book of yours. Fiscal federalism is still a matter of a lot of contention. Right now, one state government, Kerala, is complaining to the centre that we gave free land for Tiruvananthapuram Airport, and you have, uh, instead of giving its governance to KSIDC, you have given it to a private party, and the centre is complaining. Uh, to the states in general that we want to give income to farmers but you are not giving us land records so fiscal federalism is still a lot of contention let us begin with what pinarayi vijayan is saying uh, do you think he has a point when he complains that uh, the management of tiruvananthapuram airport should have been given to the state owned company okay first let me clarify that this book is fiscal federalism this essentially deals with uh, Uh, imbalances, vertical and horizontal imbalances. In a way, its scope does not extend to all fiscal relations between central and state. Okay, fair enough. But still, it's relevant. I mean, because it has fiscal implications, there's no doubt about that. Uh, third, uh, that w it w what is what's a prospective point of view? Mm. Kerala Chief Minister, I think his stand is that I have given land because it is a government of India airport. And therefore, we are given all the facilities. Now, if you are privatizing it, then you have to pay for my share of the facilities, or I should have been involved. I think any state government, or in fact, even if it's a private party which has given, so I think there is a fair point uh, there. I think it's very difficult to find fault with uh, the fairness. And okay. uh, now, uh, it's not necessary the central agrees because in many other cases before, the central government that uh, the central enterprise have taken the land and they sold and they did not share it with the states. Okay. But I think that has been the complaint of the states that whenever there is an opportunity, they are exploited. I think that's why I'm asking for empirical evidence even in my book. What about the centre's complaint that they have this farm income? But uh, uh, very few states have given them data. Is that fair on the part of the states to stand in the way? No, I think it's unfair. But except the states' point of view is, states' point of view is very simple. Cooperative federalism means the centre cooperates with states, and states cooperate with the centre. Mm. But every time you can't say this is what I want, you cooperate. So the state government can say, tell us in how many schemes you cooperate, you have supported us. Okay. Number one. Number two, the staff is the state government. Yes. The, there was no consultation about the scheme, so in a way, except that it's your scheme for which I have to pay money. I have to. I refer to it in the book also. Yes. So I think that ultimately, the question is whether something is a jointly arrived at program. Then there will be joint ownership. So the best way of having such national programs is perhaps to make any such scheme. A joint scheme of union and states. Mm -hmm. Describe it as such. Then there will be ownership. Otherwise, it becomes a competition for uh, uh, taking credit, and that is not the best way of working out a federation. Yes. Uh, let me just read out uh, one part on page 77 of the book where you say that the entire credit is taken by the central government, whereas the schemes are jointly funded and the implementation is done entirely by the states. that is uh, perhaps then the state's argument yes okay now let me play devil's advocate uh, the center has started a lot of schemes over the last 75 years which uh, you know the, the center's uh, bureaucracy is elite the politicians are better informed better educated uh, so are not central schemes you know more useful are they not uh, you know the social expenditure for instance whether it is adversary abhiyan or an 
MNREGS. Uh, I mean, are they not qualitatively superior? Uh, let me put slightly differently. I was secretary in the state government. I went as joint secretary in the center. So have I become better because I went to the center? Okay. Most of the bureaucracy in the center, so-called elite bureaucracy, have been going from the state. Okay. So I don't know on what basis one can say that they're superior. Or you can say that they are taken from outside the IAS or whatever it is. Again, you can check up the background, whether they become better than where they are supposed to be. As far as politicians are concerned, I don't know if you have to choose between being a chief minister and union cabinet minister. What would any politician in India prefer? So that means, do you mean that if you are not, we don't become a chief minister, you become a better person, you become a union minister? That's what again I keep saying. There's an impression. There's an impression. And now, for instance, I'll just tell, you just pick up Ministry of Agriculture and Government of India. Just pick up the list of giant secretaries, deputy secretaries, giant. find out their background and in what way it is related to agriculture. And agriculture is essentially state. State. And the agriculture ministry is one of the largest in government of India. Oh. Agriculture, education and health. These three are essentially state government functions. Concurrent list is only because of advanced research, but the largest bureaucracy is there. So my point again is please pre prepare the areas in which you say that they know the central government has, because I worked in both and I don't think I was better when I was in the center than okay. Okay, would you say, okay, let me take up this, uh, the way you have described your own book in the cover. Some believe that the states relative to the center do not adequately emphasize social expenditure. Do you agree? No, again, one has to uh, look at the empirical evidence. Uh, if you take the total expenditure, let us say, in education, I think the numbers my colleague, Dr. J. R. Reddy, my co-author, Dr. J. R. Reddy, can give, I think at an uh, all India level, if you take the general government expenditure on health, I think more than 80% of the budget expenditure is incurred by the states. 80% of all the money spent on health is by the state. And not by the center. Even after Ayushman and all that? I believe so. My colleague who is working in Telangana government can confirm, my friend. Same with education. Okay. So the limited and... 80% 80 80 come is spent by the state? Yes. Out of its budget. So my limited point is, when the center is contributing 20% or 25% to the total of the national expenditure, central plus states, who is... Who is who can make a difference? Second. Third, how health should be delivered in Kerala and how health should be delivered in Nagaland? I think if you say that Delhi knows better about both, it's a little difficult to start. To accept. Okay. In fact, I would even say that maybe Nagaland is better off learning from Kerala. Okay. So in a way, he, he encouraging states to learn from each other may be more productive. Then telling the every state, getting into it, getting into state, unless there's a proven wisdom. Is there evidence that there's a proven wisdom? Again, let me say there is one area where the union government is functioning with its own machinery, in exactly same areas, education, health, in union territories, union territories. So compare the perform. If any program has tried out in union territories for one or two years, and if you are able to say that that is doing better, then you can advocate for the whole country. There is no such example. I don't know. You better ask. <laughs> no, you have been, no, been my, in my, charge my, of the Finance Commission. See, my impression, I don't have data, but my, the Finance Commission doesn't, jurisdiction doesn't go to you. But my limited point is, if I see all the flagship programs, almost all the flagship programs were in some state or other before. Yes, yes, absolutely. Midday meal scheme came from Tamil Nadu. And, and Employment that. guarantee came uh, from Maharashtra. It was considered populist. So when the state government does it, it is populist. When the national government, when the union government does it, it is for people's interest, you know. Secondly, they have been adopted from different states, but has the union government adopted from an experimentation from union territory? So therefore, again, I, you can make technical parameters, financial parameters, economic parameters to, to uh, confirm your presumption that the central government somehow has superior capacities is designed. It's, for instance, research, definitely. So no state government can do that. So there are certain areas, definitely. But not most of the areas where maximum money is being spent. 
My, my, the purpose of the book is to provoke, because answers require more empirical work. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, what about profligacy? Uh, has the center been fiscally more prudent uh, than the states, or have the states been more prudent? The impression is the states have been profligate. Uh, the data, again, if we have the data, and it should be subject to confirmation. Okay. The capital outlay, I think capital outlay is important for development. Yes. The capital outlay by the state governments put together is double or more than double of the capital outlay of the center. So who is contributing more to the public investment in this country? Two-thirds is by the states, one-third is by the center. center. Okay. Second, who is doing, contributing to savings or dis-savings? Center contributes to dis-savings. The states as a whole are either marginally at their positively to savings or about close to zero. Okay, I, I think I can pick that. Your record is that uh, states' revenue deficits have come down to zero by 15-16 uh, as a percentage of GDP, whereas the center continues to remain at uh, between 25 and 3%. Dr. Reddy, that's a lot of questions on fiscal federalism, but I have a former RBI governor with me. I must ask a few more monetary policy related questions. Uh, do stay with me. That's just a few more questions with Dr. Wiley Davis.